we're working on the automated transient wobble patch, we created a function which allows us to draw a custom envelope shape, which is pretty neat for when we trigger the transient. We haven't got the transient trigger hooked up yet, but that's all good. And we've got this custom LFO over here, which we're going to incorporate soon. So what I want to do in this video is at the moment, this will only go from the max value to 64. I want this to be able to go into the negatives as well. So I'm going to just create another scale object here. There's probably a more efficient way to do this. Again, if you're a max live person, please let me know in the comments. Um, so this one, I'm just simply going to go, this one goes from zero to 64. Uh, so if I just duplicate this dial here and let's just have a look. Uh, this is incorrect. Sorry, this needs to be 64 to zero. So see, we've got one that goes up and one that goes down. I need to be able to choose one of these. Um, I'm just going to use uh, G switch two. I just find them easier to deal with. Uh, we'll go G switch one, which allows us to specify two in inputs. So if I have input coming in here and an input coming in here, then I can just use a toggle box to specify which one actually gets sent to the dial. So when it's off, we get the first one. When it's on, we get the second one. So that's all good. So we kind of need, um, we kind of want to randomly generate this value, which is, I'll keep the toggle in there. That's a little bit finicky. Again, this is a prototype stage, so there's a lot of unnecessary stuff here until I figure out how to optimize it. But let's just go random one here. So whenever this is triggered, we'll need a bang to trigger whether, oh, we're going to need a random two. What numbers are we getting out of random two? Just zero and one? Yep. Okay, so that's all good. So let's talk about the transient trigger here. So I'm actually going to remove this, and this, and this, and this, and this, this, this. Uh, I don't know why this shit's over here. Put it back down here. Okay. Mm, this, and this, and this, and this. So this trigger is now doing multiple things. We've got T, B, 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 B. Just give it lots. So first thing it's going to do is going to randomize which direction it goes in. Second thing it will do is let's randomize the let's just go a thousand. So it's going to randomize the time. Hook that up. We also need it to. Mm, I think that's good for now. I'm going to introduce an amount next, and then we trigger this. So now we should get. Oh, we also need it too. Hmm. This just needs to go directly into the line. I kind of like the re-trigger happening here. It's probably not going to stick with the final product because um, it's a bug. But at the moment, it's a feature. Okay, so the amount value is basically going to be this this value here. So let's put in another live number box. And we'll connect it to both this one and this one. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, so this needs to... Uh, 
So this goes from zero. This this needs to go from sixty four to. A, <laughs> okay, this needs to value of sixty four. Sixty four. Uh, what have I done? What did I just change? Uh, yeah, okay, sixty four. All right, so <laughs> maths. So we need to change this from 64 to 127. So this would simply be plus 63, I think. Let's check that out. So it's bottom value, it's 63, top value, it's 127. Um, this needs a range of 63. Okay. 63 to 126. This needs to be plus 64. Okay. Okay, so that's good. That will specify this amount. And we need to go from 0 to 64. So this one should just be minus. Maybe minus 63. We'll figure that out, that out in a sec. So let's connect this to this message box here. So this is, again, specifying the amount. Okay, well, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, so as I drag this up, it needs to go towards zero. thinking about the best way to do this uh, what happens if we use a times need of one you guys are not allowed to hassle me about this stuff this is kind of when my brain starts clocking out and I have to really think about how we do this okay so that's going down so now if we go plus 64, do let me know in the comments how I could do this maths easier. This needs to be 63, I think. Yeah, so there we go. So that'll go up to 63. That'll go down to zero then up to 63. So let's just look at these two values side by side here. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the amount factor. So on this end it scales up, and this end it scales down. So if I bring this to zero, we're still getting... Um, value coming through here I'm gonna bring this down oh these need to be floating points that's my issue I think I hope I hope Why are we still getting... Like, this should heavily restrict the output value. It's a bit confusing. Let's put the scale object into message boxes so we can see. Hmm. 
I'm going to just remove this random for a second, make it a nice solid 500 milliseconds. It's almost like this isn't registering. This is the max value, right? Ah, oh, this is the exponential base value. Okay. There's my problem. So this needs to be going into this one here, like so. Okay, okay, okay. So let's bring that to zero. I think this needs to be 63 as well. And we need to re-trigger that. And it's not quite right. So this does needs to be 60. Hmm, that's gonna put it, give us a one though, isn't it? Oh no. Um, oh, that'll do. Okay, so we have an amount. <laughs> Let's bring that right down. Okay, cool. The next video, I'm going to combine this and the LFO and we'll give it some kind of mix or dry wet dial. Yeah, see you then.